What is up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. We're gonna get right down to it guys. By the title of this video you all already know. If you're running a Hellcat pump, you're probably doing something wrong. I know I have been there, done that. That's why I'm here to help you guys out. Now we are running the Hellcat pump in this thing or also known as a PWM pulse with modulation pump or I mean there's all kinds of different um, words or I mean variables, a variable pump. Um, Depends on whatever you want to call it, whatever you guys want to call it, but it's a PWM pump, pulse width modulation. And what that really does, um, it really is something that's on the new cars. It's something that's even the Camaro has for sure. Camaro has, even when it comes to the fans, the fans are now running it as well in the new cars. What it does, it limits the voltage that's going to that device. So if, for example, for this pump, Hellcat pump, right? that's basically running on anywhere between let's say eight volts all the way to the full 12 volt circuit so it basically the ecu is saying hey you know what we're at idle we're cruising no need for to dump all this fuel and turn the pump all the way up to its full potential and give you full fuel all the time max all the time when it's unnecessary what it does really in the long term it really helps to preserve the pump and any other electronic device, for example, fans as well. Um, these are not those, but if you're running that pump 24 seven at 12 volts all the time, whenever you're driving it, you're really just putting that thing through its paces. Like it's just heating up all the time to its full max. So what this does running a fuel pump controller is what we got going on right here. It actually is gonna limit the voltage when you're just cruising. And it really comes down to RPMs if you are just on the highway cruising i don't know 2500 rpm maybe 2800 and there's no need to have that fuel pump screaming just pushing all this fuel to the motor there's just no need for it so what this guy is going to do from aeromotive love their stuff love their product i will put down the link to this down in the description below if you guys um want this particular pump controller there's different ones i know there's different ones out there but i've never had any issues with aeromotive stuff but this guy is going to basically say, hey, at uh, anything below 3,000 RPM, I want the pump to be at 8, 9 volts, something like that. You know what I mean? And then let's say you get on the throttle and you're about 3,800, 4 grand. Then it's going to say, you know what? I want all 12 volts going back to the pump and giving me every fuel possible, every little ounce of fuel that that pump can give me to the motor so really it's just going to preserve the longevity of the fuel pump and it's going to save you guys gas too because this thing man these things are screaming but the last thing you want to do is be changing that fuel pump out all the time but you see this you see my freaking bullet stack here boys yeah buddy you're gonna need this well not you're not gonna need all of these but um aeromotive does require you to have a 12 volt signal for their tack input so what that means is a lot of times especially for this gm ecu we're running remember the other day we did that video and we did all the pinouts for that and we remember we had that one extra tack wire that we came out and we doubled back and then it's a white wire here now you're going to need a tack signal that's what requires for it this thing to really work or you can use an override switch where we're going to put in line as well this comes with the kit Basically, if you just want to run fuel, um, fuel, max fuel all the time, you click the switch and you're juiced, baby. And if not, you just obviously turn it down. It'll run at minimal voltage. But um, that signal wire, though, if you're not running a GM harness with the tack output, then you're going to have to tap into your ignition coils. It's usually like the negative terminal or the negative side of the coil. And you're looking for a 12 volt signal. So this particular one from GM gives you about, it's a 12, no, I'm sorry, not 12, but it's like a two rev signal. I want to say two volt rev signal, something like that. So it's not what we need. So that's what this little ohm resistor guy comes in. This is a, I want to say this is a 1K, one watt um, resistor. Let me double check that real quick. A few moments later. Stand corrected. It is, it is a 1K but it's a half watt, half watt resistor. So what that's gonna do is actually gonna bring the voltage up 
and we're looking for a 12 volt DC input, correct? So that's exactly what it's gonna do. It's gonna turn that signal, and it's gonna turn it up. It's gonna turn it up to a 12 volt signal. So we're gonna put this in line. As a matter of fact, I've already done a lot of this work. Now, Aeromotive does give you a bunch of goodies to use for this project. It give, they give you the wire you're gonna need. So this is also the wire we're gonna run back to our switch, the switch itself the actual controller, a bunch of connectors, and also a relay. Where is that guy? That little, it's like a little breaker relay. What did I do with it? Oh, Lord, I must. Oh, dude, I'm so, <laughs> I'm blind, dude. It's right there, you guys. Look at it. Yeah, so you're going to have to have a little relay, or I'm sorry, a breaker in between. They want you to run a little breaker. So what we'll actually do is that we're going to run our fuel pump wire coming off the relay off the gm harness so we're going to come out the output out of the relay which is a positive and we're going to run it to this guy here which is our power and then output into that guy there so it's pretty simple guys it's, it's just fuel pump power fuel pump ground and then an actual designated ground from your car a good ground don't let me use no bs ground y'all and then the power coming in and that's going to be the one from our fuel pump relay. And then your ignition, you're going to need also an ignition power, a tack signal, which we just talked about. And that's the override switch there. So that one lead will go to there and another one will go to your ground. It's just really going to ground it out. But up here as well, you have the little dials here that you can mess with. This is what you're going to basically tell it uh, what minimum voltage you're going to run. And then also here is how you set the actual tack signal. We're not going to get into that stuff today because we still have some work to do on this car before we can really get into it. But that's basically gonna say, hey, at, uh, at four grand, you're gonna set it at four grand, wherever you wanna call it. You can set it at three grand, or you can set it at idle, shoot, I don't care. But it, you'll basically tell it when you want that pump to be just juiced up. So you're also gonna need, obviously, you're gonna need an ignition. So I already got a pre-wired ignition over here. You got the fuel pump that's um, output, which is your positive, that's gonna go to our breaker. And then, these two wires as well these are the ones going all the way back to the fuel pump now air motive is nice enough they actually give you 10 gauge wire i just use it guys use 10 gauge wire trust me use that 10 gauge wire all the way back to your pump and that runs all the way back there so that's already pre plumbed i should say pre-ran i did that earlier you guys you guys don't have to watch me do that now i've also already kind of started this process here now there is our resistor in line you guys can see I use a, a few buck connectors with the heat shrink. I like these, um, especially in, for this application, you guys. You guys can use solder if you really want to, but a lot of people do not have access to soldering iron, let alone do one do the trouble. So all you have to do is put it in line there, and then this guy will go to the actual controller. We're also going to put a piece of heat shrink on here. You, you obviously want to protect that resistor because now you have that guy in line and the last thing you want to do is have that thing get yanked off of there so we're going to run that all the way down and then we'll heat shrink that on but let me go ahead and uh, i think we found a good mounting point right in this area right here you guys so we're going to mount it right there right next to our basically uh ground box here and that way we can still mess with it we can still access it when it comes to actually setting our voltages in our tack so let's go ahead and let me get started real quick <laughs> clean clean boys yes sir guys it was a pain in the butt to really try to film for you guys in this little pocket you guys can see this little fender corner right here it is not ideal so i went ahead and just kind of pre-ran everything and hooked everything up also air motive what's going on y'all these little connectors right here on these little side is not cool man they gave you these connectors and they don't even fit so i had to find something i had to make something you almost have to like start cut the ends off of them so you can actually get them to fit in there but we got everything pretty much ready to go so this is our battery output right that's going to go back to the breaker up there so we have the fuel pump wire coming into there and the other side will get this guy and then we have our ground which will just loop back into our grounding post right there but other than that it's pretty much good to go you guys like i said 
we have the one wire going back the override wire going back and it's just sitting kind of right there for me i'm gonna end up just putting it inside the cap and then add the switch and we're all set now mind you guys if you guys need these freaking bullets right here y'all aka resistors if you guys need one man let me know i will send you one for free you guys you can see i literally i only needed one we only needed one and they make you buy this entire freaking roll so if you need one shoot me an email and i will be gladly to mail you guys one for free so or i can put it down in the description below and you guys can buy it from amazon but i think this thing is pretty much ready to go let me as a matter of fact let me go ahead and mount it for you guys so you can see what it looks like what do you think let me know put it down in the comments below that's really how it's gonna sit we used all the hardware from aeromotive except for the connecting terminals down there those little small guys but they do provide these screws here with a couple nuts so we drilled those got those mounted got our little breaker mounted up there everything is ready to go with the exception of of course that little guy right there that guy just will live like i said underneath the dash so you can that way so if you want to go ahead and burn the tires up we just hit that switch baby and full send you know let that fuel pump feed let that motor eat and burn them tires off but i think that's going to do it for this video you guys i will make sure to put uh down in the description below i'll link those resistors and i'll also link a better breakdown from aeromotive on how really to plumb this thing or i should say wire this thing because they really want to have that 12 volt signal so i'll put it down in the description below check that out check that link out but guys do me a favor i see you guys watching hit the subscribe button for me and you got to hit the bell for notifications and you guys already know stay wrenching